Can you really camp in a pop-up truck camper in extreme cold? Today it's going to have a high of 2 degrees and a low of negative 6 with a wind chill of like negative 20. So we're going to see what it's like camping out of a pop-up truck camper and see if we're really able to do it in this kind of weather. We were in town because of an event. We're staying at a hotel and lucky for us there were outlets outside so I could plug in the engine block heater for the truck, which means I should be able to get it started this morning. These old diesels do not like the cold. So I'm going to unplug the truck and then head over to the campground where we're going to spend the next week. <laughs> Leo does not sound happy, but he started. Well, the engine block heater helped. Um, our gauge says that the oil temp is currently 24 degrees. It'll be interesting. I think we're gonna have some real challenges in this weather. We could drive south and hopefully get somewhere that is a little bit warmer. We're a bit concerned about driving on the roads. There have been a lot of horrific accidents over the past few days. There is a big one in Fort Worth that we drove past, another in, I believe, Jackson, Mississippi. Logically, it makes more sense for us to stay put, try and find a campground and see if we can wait out this storm and then get on the road once things are better because I think right now, for us to get someplace that is not snowing or doesn't have ice on the ground, it's going to take, it's a 10 hour drive in good conditions. And the way the roads are right now, we'd be going probably half that speed. So we'll see what this is like. I'm, I'm really curious to see what camping in a pop top truck camper is going to be like in such severe cold. One thing that kind of scares me about getting on the road with a truck this old if we were going to try to drive south is what happens if we break down on the side of the road. Um, it's so cold out you, know, you have to wait an hour or so for a tow truck and they're probably going to be extra busy. Now what we have been doing is we made sure to fill up on propane. I made sure to winterize before we came up here so I emptied all the water, blew out the lines, Worst case, if we're having trouble with the camper, we put everything down and just get a hotel room until this all blows over. We don't have to be anywhere right away. So we can just take our time, relax, and enjoy the weather for what it is. I've said I wanted to do winter camping. You get it. <laughs> Kate found Cook's RV Park in Springfield, Missouri using one of her many RV travel apps. This well-rated park has full hookup sites, free Wi-Fi, a bathhouse, propane refill, and a few other amenities that come with an RV park. A very nice gentleman from the campground named David guided us to our pull-through site and showed us all the hookups, including the heated water hose. The power pedestal had a standard household plug which we could use for the truck's engine block heater and shore power for the camper. David told us to take our time getting set up and head inside to pay for our campground when we were ready. Kate was able to get the rear side of the camper up quickly, but she seemed to be struggling with the front of the camper, which concerned me a bit. Are you having some trouble? Oh, my feet were slipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's so warm in here, come inside. Well, let me go get us hooked up. What are you plugging in? Uh, I'm gonna try plugging in our batteries to see if they'll charge. I know they're really cold right now. Okay. While Kate tried to figure out what to do about the snow inside the camper, I went outside to plug the camper into shore power. As I was plugging the camper in, I thought to myself, we should have purchased an electric blanket and an electric heater to use during this winter storm. All right, let's turn the heat up. Yes. Do 61. When I came into the camper last night to check on things, our batteries, we had a warning because they were so cold they weren't charging. Well, what I did was I opened up the battery box that's the top, you just lift it off, and there's a vent over here that I just stuck a rag in for the time being. But our batteries have warmed up significantly, so now that we're plugged in, they're taking a charge again. At this point, we're at 51 degrees, and 51 degrees right now feels very warm compared to, what is it? two outside right now uh i think it was negative two the last time i checked <laughs> i hopefully i think today is supposed to be one of the coldest days and it's going to get warmer in a manner of speaking 
but we're all set up. We were able to get the roof up with no problem aside from you slipping a little bit once you were trying to get the top up. I think we're gonna leave the battery box open. Um, I did buy some spray foam. So I might spray foam those little vents. We don't need them. And maybe as a future mod, what I might do is cut a hole here and put a little vent just so the ambient temperature in here can easily go into that box. But the batteries have actually been warming up, which is nice. Uh, you know, we've got water. We put all our water in here. There's a heated hose outside that we can fill this up with. I have emptied all the tanks. This The unit is winterized. I don't put the fluid in. I just blow out all the lines. And aside from that, we're good. The nice gentleman here at the office said, if you guys happen to run out of propane, just leave the bottle outside. He'll come by, pick it up, fill it up for us, and basically put it on our tab. Aside from that, I think we're just going to use this time to kick back, relax, catch up on some reading, get some work done, and enjoy the winter weather. It's winter! <laughs> Kate, you've always wanted to do winter camping. I'm doing it! It's cold! <laughs> that woman. That didn't last long. Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to throw a snowball at you. <laughs> wait, wait. Kate has no idea right now that when she makes a snowball, her hands are going to be freezing cold. She's never spent time in the snow like this. We brought one side of the roof down, so there's less square footage for the heater to heat. And it's actually been doing a really good job. We've been maintaining right around 64 degrees in here, which is comfortable. We could turn the heat up if we wanted to, but there's really no need. Throw a sweater on and you're comfortable and good. We're gonna have a bottle of wine, kick back and relax, and when we're ready for bed, what I think we're gonna do is bring that side of the roof up bring this side down and then there will be again less room for the heater to heat. I do want to say a quick thank you to Keith and Wee of Keith and Wee's Adventures for giving us this bottle when we were visiting them. It is going to be enjoyed tonight. I'll crack it open right now. It's a little cold but that'll be all right. I never complain about a very nice bottle of wine. We're celebrating our coldest day in the camper together. Ever. I will say that this is holding up great, a lot better than I actually expected, but it does make you appreciate having a hard-sided camper with all that insulation. You know, there is heat loss here. Given the circumstances and as comfortable as we are out here and as nasty as it is out there, we're doing all right. I think we're out of propane. Ruh bro. I think our first tank went empty, so I'm gonna have to go outside and uh, change the tanks. Unfortunately, it's negative 12 out right now, and <laughs> I'm kind of cold. Bundle up. It's 37 degrees in here. Really? Yeah. Oh man, it's cold out there. The temperature actually dipped down to 34 degrees before I finally crawled back into bed. A few hours later, we woke up to sunshine and clear blue skies, which was a welcome change from the day before. Sure is a nice day out, isn't it? So David's gonna go fill our propane, but he said there's ice expected tomorrow and they're doing rolling blackout. Well, we're good. The batteries are working fine, as long as we keep getting propane. <laughs> Made myself a nice hot cup of coffee, of course. But I used up all the water, so we'll fill up the Berkey. It's open.
After filling up our water filter, I went outside to fill up our five gallon collapsible water container by Smart Bottle. This double wall container is BPA free and designed for heavy duty use. I've actually dropped it a few times with a full container of water and it's held up really well. Now the thing is, we can't use the faucet and we can't use the shower, so hence why we're at a campground with a bathhouse. David from Cook's RV Park gave us a site that was close to the bathhouse so we didn't have to walk too far into snow. This heated building had reasonably priced washers and dryers, a full shelf of books to choose from, and a self-service dog wash. Most importantly though, there were two very clean and large bathrooms with hot showers which we took full advantage of during our stay. The next morning, we woke up to a few more inches of snow on the ground and enjoyed a quiet morning at the campground. We did start to notice some of the effects the cold weather was having on our camper. Frozen solid. <laughs> There's an argument for double pane windows. As the snow on the roof and other parts of the camper started to melt, we decided to go outside and check up on things. Plus, who doesn't enjoy breaking off a few icicles? <laughs> All right, let's go for a walk. We didn't make it too far before heading back to the camper for warmth and to call it a night. Well, it's a gorgeous day today and I think it might actually get above freezing. So Kate and I have decided to head into town. I plugged the engine block heater in. Leo is getting nice and toasty. I'm gonna see if he'll start this morning. If he will, then I need to air up some of the tires because I dropped the air pressure since we were driving around in snow and ice. It gave us a little bit more traction and uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Crossing the fingers. Oh, ice is falling off a roof. because we had friends who were driving down the highway and it got so cold, the uh, diesel gelled up on them and they had to be uh, going to lift mode to just get off the highway. So we're all good, happy days. It took a few minutes to set up our portable air compressor to air the tires back up, but the engine sounded great and we were both glad to pack up the camper and get out for the day. We've survived Snowvid 2021. The weather is definitely clearing up. Tomorrow it's supposed to be, I think, the warmest day of the week. So if you had any clue as to whether or not you could survive negative temperatures in a pop-up truck camper, well, you can. You just have to have plenty of propane. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more cool content, head on over to our website at worthyrussos.com and we'll see you next time. Bye.